Refer to Ms. James Bay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As always, a great honour to rise in this House. I'll be sharing my time with a member for Windsor West. The fact that we have to discuss in 2023 the need to stop slave labour products from entering Canada is a very telling uh, indicator of where we are in the world right now. Uh, we are, of course, the focus for the Conservatives is um, the horrific treatment of the Uyghurs in China. But we need to broaden this to look at the global race to the bottom that has led to such massive exploitation of environment, Indigenous people, and the rights of working people around the world. What we are talking about is the dark side of globalization. You know, five years ago, probably, it would have been heresy to question the great myth of globalization, but then that was before COVID and the fact that the supply chains were not able to withstand, that we couldn't provide our frontline medical workers with proper PPE because we didn't have the factory capacity, because we had offshored all these uh, basic things that a country needs to keep itself safe to the lowest common denominators and to the sweatshops um, in the global south. Before, with uh, globalization, we were told that it would lift all boats. And it certainly lifted some boats. It lifted the super yachts. But it was always about freeing the power of capital to live and move wherever it wanted without obligation for the environmental or legal obligations in the jurisdictions that they worked within. In fact, globalization was about limiting the power of countries and regions to protect their interests. We know what happened when Mexico tried to stop um, toxic uh, chemicals. They were targeted because that was supposed to be unfair to trade. So we're now at a point where the global supply chain is using slave labor. Um, this is not some dark, obscure fact. All one has to do is go to any shopping mall, go into any of the big stores, the companies that have been named uh, and as being complicit in slave labor, we know them all. Adidas, Carters, Gap, General Motors, Google, Bosch, Calvin Klein, Abercrombie & Fitch, Dell. That's just a few of the 83 that have been identified. They are the corporations that have their products in all of our stores. And, of course, I find it interesting that the Conservative focus is, well, let's try and work with our international allies and try and deal with this somehow, as opposed to saying to these companies, you deal with slave labour, you get charged. End of story. But what we see here, Madam Speaker, again, is this myth of this race to the bottom, that somehow people are surprised that we'd end up with slave labour. You know, I go back to the free trade debate with Brian Mulroney, and in that original free trade debate, it was arguing that if we uh, merged our environmental and our labor standards with the United States, we'd all be better off. And of course, we saw a huge bleed off of manufacturing jobs. But at least with the United States, we were dealing with comparable economies. But it was Clinton and Mulroney's decision to extend it to Mexico that was the real indicator because Mexico had much lower wage standards. They did not have the protection of laws that Canadian and American workers had. And once the free trade agreement was set with Mexico, we saw the setting up of the Maquiadora uh, se sections where these companies just moved across the border and were protected under Mexican law from all kinds of obligations to pay proper wages, to pay even properly into the Mexican system. So it was the race to the bottom. We was signed on by our country right then. Uh, 766,000 U.S. jobs just moved over the border into Mexico to low-wage uh, Maquiadora plants, which is interesting that those plants were also locations where horrific numbers of young women were being found murdered, sexually mutilated, is if, if you create disposable products, you're somehow creating disposable people. And we've never actually dealt with that. But from the model that they had with the Macchiadora um, section set up in Mexico was the idea, well, let's offshore to the global south. And remember, Jean Chrétien and the great Team China uh, initiative. 
And it wasn't that we were going to be able to sell our furniture into the world's biggest market. This was about capital being able to offshore its jobs. And the company, known at that time for the biggest drive, to going to American Canadian corporations saying, you could make more money by shutting down your operations and shifting that work over to places like India or China. Of course, there's McKinsey. Uh, McKinsey, which is getting $100 million in contracts now from the federal government. McKinsey being the company that has been called the co single biggest factor in the destruction of the American working and middle class. So what we saw in the move to shift work to low-wage jurisdictions without legal accountability or legal standards was the race to the bottom became more and more severe as economic precarity grew in North America. And so we ended up with a situation, for example, Joe Fresh, I spoke about earlier today, Joe Fresh and Loblaws selling cheap clothing uh, that you could get, you know, $2 shirts for your kids as you're at the checkout counter. These were being made in sweatshops in Bangladesh under horrific conditions. And there was a collapse of one of these sweatshop factories that killed 1,135 human beings. 1,135 human beings died because of corporate negligence. Another 2,500 were injured. And there was no accountability for Loblaws, who makes record profits, as we know, or Joe Fresh. They paid 150 bucks per person and walked away. That's astounding. We know the story of Apple, the very cool iPhone company, uh, working in uh, sweatshops in China where the workers were so mistreated they started to kill themselves in such numbers that the contractor put nets out to try and catch them from jumping. Mm -hmm. That is a degrading, despicable race to the bottom. And yet there was no accountability. Apple remained the cool company. In fact, speaking of Apple, uh, if anybody has their phone, pick that phone up and you're picking up at least a ton of rock. That's what it takes to make a phone. And that ton of rock is coming out of Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, coming out of slave labor conditions in Congo. And our supply chains have not even addressed that. So we need to start talking about the corporate accountability and responsibility for allowing this race to the bottom to happen. And what has it meant for the jobs that used to be here? You know, I, Madam Speaker, I'll, I'll quote from the RAND Corporation, not exactly your left-wing think tank, the RAND Corporation, which has worked for the U.S. military for the last half century or, or much longer. RAND looked at the growth of inequality in the United States, and they identified from the 1980s $50 trillion that was transferred from the savings and the, and the wages of the working and middle class and transferred to the upper class, the 1%. Rand says that's the equivalent of $1,144 for every worker, for every month, for four decades. That's what created in the United States the growing uh, political inequality, the growing uncertainty, the anger that's out there. So we have to address in this House accountability for what happened, allowing globalization to shift responsibility, shift work to brutal, underfunded conditions where people are exploited while undermining the middle and working class in North America. And to do that, Madam Speaker, we need corporate accountability. If you commit crimes, if, if your subcontractor commits crimes against people in the global south, you need to be held accountable for it. If you are using slave labor and selling it in malls, you need to be held accountable for it. Canadians expect that. They also expect that corporations are going to be held accountable for this offshoring of work to sweatshops, slave labor conditions, and the brutality that we've seen over the last few decades. The time has come where we have to start to shift back to corporate responsibility, environmental responsibility, and fair labor standards. Thank you.